Hey, how's it going? This is part one of a series of videos I'm going to be doing on lighting. We're going to be doing traditional lighting, DMX lighting, LED lighting, halogen lighting, scanners, PAR cans, all kinds of stuff. This first video is going to deal with PAR cans and your different options and how you might want to control your PAR cans. This is pretty basic stuff, but uh, you got to start somewhere. So check it out. What we're looking at here is about as basic as lighting gets. This is a PAR can, and all a PAR can is is a housing with a big bulb inside of it. If you look in there, you zoom in, that's a big light bulb in there. That's an old school PAR can. It's a regular, I think it's a 250 watt bulb in there, quite bright. Gets really hot really fast. You plug this thing in, you can just feel the heat pouring out of it, which was nice when I was cold at old gigs when I used to use PAR cans. The old traditional PAR cans anyway. There's a side view, you can see it's a canister. Now here, I'll plug it in so you can see what it looks like. Look, a really bright light comes out, and I mean bright. Now if I put my hand up here, I can feel the heat right away. It's instantaneous. And as you can see, that's a white light. That's pretty boring. Well, what if you wanted, let's say, uh, a green light? Well, this is what you'd have to do. You'd have to get a gel. Let me show you a gel. Here's a gel. It's basically just a colored piece of plastic. As you can see, I've got this gel cut to about the size of this square right here. What you can do is you can pull the square off, and then you can take this gel, slide it right in here, and pop it right back onto the PAR can. And now, when I plug this in, I'll get a green light. Now what if I wanted it to be blue? Well, all you'd have to do is get yourself a blue gel and swap out the green gel with the blue. Make sure the light isn't hot so you don't burn yourself. Plug it in and boom! you've got blue. I don't use the old style PAR cans anymore for several different reasons. Number one, the bulbs do blow so you have to replace them. Number two, they get really hot. Number three, they use a lot of power. Number four, you have to have several different PAR cans with several different gel colors on your light trees to create different color combinations on the dance floor. If you wanted to have green and blue on your dance floor, Maybe you'd want to have two blue PAR cans and two green ones. You'd have to turn your blue ones off to create green and turn your green ones off to create blue. Not the case with LED PAR cans, which is what I use now and what you're looking at right now. This is a Chevet Color Splash Junior. It is a DMX controllable LED PAR can. It only uses 2 watts compared to a normal PAR can, which would probably use anywhere from, oh, I don't know, maybe 100 watts all the way up to 1,000 watts. Let me show you the back of this thing. You've got DMX in and out, <clears throat> excuse me, dip switches. You can switch this thing from 110 to 220 volt if you'd like. But we're not going to mess around with too much of that today. What we're going to look at are the dip switches and what kind of color combinations you can get out of these PAR cans without swapping any gels out. We're going to show you how to use these PAR cans without a DMX controller. I'm going to play with these dip switches back here just to show you what kind of color combinations you can get out of these lights without a DMX controller just by simply flipping these dip switches. Let's flip dip switch number two. You see you get a red. Now we're going to flip dip switch number three and leave two on as well and look you get a brighter red. I'm going to flip dip switch number four. There we go. And look you get kind of an orange. What we did was we added a little green to that. Now I'm going to turn off two and three and as you can see we have green. Flip dip switch number four with five already on and you get a brighter green. Flip dip switch number six and you get an even brighter green than that. Now let's turn off those and let's flip dip switch number seven. There's a blue. There's a brighter blue on dip switch number eight. Now let's flip dip switch number six and you see we get an aqua color. What we did was we added some green to it. Now let's go ahead for fun and flip dip switch number nine and look, 
we're going through some color combinations now automatically. We have dip switches 7, 8, and 9 flipped at the moment. I'm going to turn off 7 and look what happens. Look, it goes a little faster. So you can do this kind of stuff without even having a DMX controller. You can set these up and they just kind of do what they want. Now I'm going to turn off dip switch number 8 and just leave 9 on and look what happens. We get a strobe. Now some of you may have noticed that when this light was on the light tree, which we'll look at in a minute, this bracket was bent. It's kind of drunk looking. Can you see that? It's really obvious when it's on the light tree. I'm going to show you how to fix that. This is a vice grip. It's made for metal work or welding. You could probably get it at some of your better tool supply shops or at a welding shop. More of a sheet metal tool. But here, check this out. Just take this, pop it on here, give it a good <clears throat> squeeze. Maybe you want to work the other side too. That's a lot better. So here we have our four color splash juniors on the light tree with the dip switches set to make them flash random patterns. And for some DJs, that might be enough. There's no DMX controller involved here. They're just plugged directly into the wall with the proper dip switch settings to make them do what they're doing. There's another thing you can do if you don't want to go DMX, but you want a little control over your lights. Let me show you. Now they're doing something a little more interesting. What I'm doing is I'm controlling these lights with a light controller, just chasing them. Now with this particular controller, I can make them go really fast, almost strobe, or I can make them go really slow. Now what I did was, I picked four colors. From right to left, we have a red light, a blue light, a green light, and a purple light. This is the Elation Light Copilot 2 system. Basically, it's a light controller. You can control up to eight lights at a time, but it's also what we used to call a light computer, which is basically something that will chase parkans or really any kind of lights you plug into it. It's an all-in-one piece. You used to have to get the light controller and then the little light computer module separate. Not anymore. It's all one piece. Now what you see in the background there is the power pack for the Copilot 2, but if you added an additional power pack like you see back there, it becomes a light Copilot 3 and you can control 16 lights individually at a time. I'll show you how this controller works. Basically you push the button and the corresponding light comes on. Pretty simple really. It also has what you call flash. Push the button, hold it down and the light's on, release the button and the light goes off. Now like I mentioned before you can chase with this controller. We'll flick two switches and we'll chase two lights right now. And You can speed that up or you can slow that down. You can chase three lights if you want to, or you can chase four, and simply because uh, we only have four lights plugged in, you can chase up to eight lights with this if you'd like to. And if you had the Copilot 3 option, you can chase up to 16 at a time. So that was our first video, park hands, pretty basic stuff, but if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Stay tuned for video number two. Practice and enjoy.